What you will see in the demo is how easy it is to provision a BACnet device using the auto discovery features of the protocol and managed through XRT. The demo shows how to configure and run XRT, then use the standard MQTT API to trigger BACnet discovery, then view the discovery metadata and device configurations that are automatically generated. We'll then issue commands to explicitly provision any devices that have been discovered and then issue requests to read data from and write data to the BACnet device. We will then use the API to configure a schedule to automatically read BACnet resources at periodic time intervals. The data is then exported using XRT's InfluxDB exporter component, stored in a time series database, and then visualized on a Grafana JAS board. This slide provides a pictorial representation of the demo configuration. The XRT deployment, which is running as a native executable, consists of three standard components. There's a BACnet device service component to provide connectivity to the BASB BACnet device, an MQTT bridge component, which is used to support the standard management API, and an InfluxDB exporter component, which is used to write the BACnet device data to a local InfluxDB database instance. All of the demo is running on a Linux Edge Gateway connected to the BACnet device over TCP IP. So what you can see here is my IDE running on a Linux Gateway. XRT is already running, and what I'm going to show you to start with are the main configuration files that support this example. The first configuration file we're going to look at is the MQTT bridge JSON file. The file is used to configure the XRT MQTT bridge component and specifies the details include an IP address, username and password of the local MQTT broker that is used to interact with XRT. The second configuration file is the BACnet JSON file, which is used to configure the XRT BACnet device service. In this file, all of the MQTT topics through which clients interact with the XRT BACnet device service are specified. The first thing that we're going to do is to use the discovery topic to send a message from an MQTT client to trigger BACnet discovery. And from console one, I will start an MQTT client that subscribes to the discovery reply topic. From a second console window, I will issue an MQTT request to the discovery topic to start BACnet discovery. In the first console window, you can immediately see that metadata for the BASPI device that has been discovered. The next thing that we're going to do is to use the discovery information to add the BACnet device to XRT. You can see the payload for the JSON message, which includes the device instance identifier that we will send to XRT via MQTT to add the device. So if you then run the add command from the second console, XRT will provision the device that has been discovered. A new entry will be added to the devices.json file as shown. The device configuration file, we refer to them as device profiles, will also be automatically generated. This file contains the information on all the resources or data points and their addressing that can be read or written to by the XRT BACnet device service. The next thing that I will show is how to issue explicit MQTT requests to read and write data from and to the BACnet device. You can see the JSON payload for the request to read the values for all of the universal inputs. Notice the use of the wildcard to enable multi-reads. In the first console, I would start an MQTT client that will subscribe to the reply topic. In the second console, I will issue the get request. The data from the BACnet device will be immediately read and you can see the values in the first console. The next thing that I will do is issue a put command to write new data values to the BACnet device. You can see the JSON payload for the put request. In this case, we're going to set the values of binary output one and binary output two. You can see the current values of binary output one and two using the device console client provided with the BASPI device. First of all, I will issue the request to set the value of binary output two to the value one. And you can see in the device console that this has changed. Then I will issue a request to set the value of binary output one also to one. Again, you can see the value has now changed. 
The next thing that I will do is to set up a schedule so that the BACnet device service will automatically read specific BACnet values at periodic intervals, in this case every 8 seconds. You can see the JSON payload for the schedule request message on the screen. In the first console, I will start an MQTT client which will subscribe to XRT's BACnet data topic. In the second console, I will issue an MQTT request to add the schedule. You can see in the first console that data values for Universal Input 1 are automatically read every 8 seconds. As part of this example, we also have an InfluxDB exporter component configured into XRT. You can see the exporter configuration file on the screen. The exporter component is also configured to subscribe to the BACnet data topic and then write each new value to the InfluxDB server, whose IP address you can see in the config file. We've also created a simple Grafana dashboard to display the values of Universal Input 1, which are being read every 8 seconds. If we change the value of Universal Input 1 via the BASB device console, you can see the data change on the Grafana dashboard. For the final step in the demo, I will configure the XRT BACnet device service to support change of value or COV on Universal Input 2. You can see the JSON payload for this request. I will then send the request to configure Universal Input 2 with COV support from the second console. The value of Universal Input 2 will only be read and published in InfluxDB if it changes. You can update its value using the BASPI device console. The COV will be triggered and you can see the updated value displayed on the Grafana dashboard. Using the BASPI device console, we can change the values of Universal Input 1 and 2, and both the new scheduled data and the COV data values will change on the Grafana dashboard. And this concludes our demonstration of XRT in action.